right here. And there's the Vagar coming in one more time. Yeah, it's such a popular first pick right now that CJ just doesn't want to deal with it. We'll see if they continue to ban that Nunu as well. I mean, Benki did extremely well on Jarvan last game, so he's got a couple good choices. And again, taking that Rek'Sai away from Ambition, I think it's a smart choice. And there's a Cassiopeia ban. After that last game, you can't blame them. You certainly cannot. Now, that means will the Rumble ban come in? And there is a Thresh ban, actually, especially after SKT played it so well in the last game. Rumble will be the final ban here, so Nunu will be available this time around. Corky will be the first pick in both of our games so far tonight. Well, judging how, you know on how Space has played Callista in the past, I don't think they're really too worried about uh, him taking that, so why not grab that Corky? And will we see Coco default back to that Jace pick that he has had success on in the past? Well, I don't really think there's anything in Easy Hoon's champion pool that's going to have a great lane up against this Jace, so an early pick may be warranted, especially since it is a little bit of a contested pick with Easy Hoon rolling out the Jace at times as well. And What do you think about a Katarina against the Jace? Uh, I think Jace will just to the skies and hammer her in the <laughs> face All and right. knock her out of her ultimate uh, if she could even get there in the first place. So there's a lot of CC and I think picking Katarina on blue side is very dangerous in Shunpo general. all day. Shunpo all day, every day. We'll see. It's a lot of response though and they could be taking the Ezreal instead as a flex pick right here that has been one of Coco's more common pickups this season and looks like CJ may be just defaulting back to double AD, something that they've run so many times. I, I CJ I just feel is very transparent right now. They took the Cassidy in the last game after the Hecarim, so you knew Coco was going to play it. Coco has basically just been alternating between Ezreal Jace and Cassidy for the wait, most part. Wait a second. Are you saying that a CJ team seems to be stuck on one <laughs> style of playing? I don't think that's ever happened before. <laughs> Never. I ever. can't conceive of a CJ team being stuck in just one style of playing. That seems so hard to believe, Monty. Yeah, interesting that Coach Sun, the former Blaze coach, is in the booth with them as well. <laughs> Coincidence. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> Bengi uh, looks like he's going to be grabbing that Jarvan, which. I think it's a great pickup in uh, this round. They've taken the Rek'Sai away, and yeah, why not grab that Maokai yet again? All right, well, SKT is going to play the same game they did last time around, and it certainly worked well for them. They're switching it up with the Corky this time, so they'll have to take a different approach in the mid lane, but given the champion pool, I think we can anticipate perhaps a Xerath pickup here for Easy Hoon to synergize with the Corky for some nice mid game poke. Probably, sense. probably what's going to happen, just given what Easy Hoon has been playing recently. Yeah. And they can probably anticipate this Ezreal to go mid. But where will the Master Yi go? That's the question. <laughs> probably uh, to some solo queue game that's being played in a few minutes from now, because he's not going to be in this one. Ooh, are we going to see space take the Callista? It ha really hasn't been a great champion for him. He has yet to turn in. Yeah. A good performance on Callista. Not to mention that it doesn't synergize very well with the rest of their composition. Sivir would be a lot better right here. And you may say, well, Doan Monty, Space was the first person to get a win with Callista, but he definitely wasn't the reason they won that game. And wow, we're going to see the Hecarim picked up again for Shy. I don't know about this. If CJ is going to run this again, they're going to need to be much more aggressive about taking risks and kind of making those early game moves that they did last game. But again, it is something that seems, you would think it would be something that was fairly easy to identify and correct, you know? Well, the thing about the ezreal Hecarim combo, though, is it does present a lot of uh, backline line threats. So playing yeah. Xerath may not be such an attractive option anymore for SKT with the True Shot Barrage and the Onslaught of Shad Shadows easily able to pin Xerath down. Well, do you maybe go for something like a Lulu here with Jarvan and Maokai going in? I, I'd be concerned about late game damage with Lulu, but you could do something like that just because then you're also having a really a lot of AP damage as well, which makes MR a very good buy. True also. Oh, if they're going to do it though, I really, I'm not a fan of this, especially with an anti support. This is like pure AP. Wow. Okay. All right, well. I didn't. I didn't ask for these powers, man. <laughs> I can. I'm only right when it's not the ideal pick. That's my. That's my secret I, I power. Mean, it will be very strong in the mid game, and they have that going for them. So yeah. well, they've got a huge wombo combo. That's true. They have a lot of AOE CC. Uh, wow. So if they can 
wrap people up for long enough, but I just have a feeling that if CJ goes late right here, the other advantage that they have is, so by picking the Lulu, I think what SKT is thinking is that they're going to have the engage to deal with a double AD composition, which is what they're thinking is going to come in right here. The Annie, the Lulu speed. I mean, they've got so many ways to engage onto a back line. Yeah. So CJ is going to have to go the other way right now. It will be casted in for Coco once again. And so it's basically going to be a race to the back line for both of these teams. Space will have a little bit more maneuverability, but this should be a little bit wild. These team comps are just going to crash into each other. It's going to run past each yeah, other. Yeah, pretty really. much. Yeah. Well, we'll see if CJ can breathe some life into this series. They've looked pretty lackluster so far, but with this composition, maybe they can do it. Well, certainly they have better scaling. Uh, CJ has a lot of power in the late game and the MR will be so efficient against SKT in general. We'll see how Bang decides to build, but if he doesn't go for an Infinity Edge and it goes late game, they are going to have a lot of problems in terms of just dealing damage to CJ and to his team composition. And if Ambition can get an Ages of the Legion, it's going to work wonders for them. Yeah, very true. Wolf on that Annie again, you know, a champion that he's kind of struggled with a bit, but he has continued to play a ton of in solo queue and will try it again in game number two here. SK Telecom with an opportunity to take a very important 2 0 in this tournament. They really do need it, especially against CJ Antis. And CJ, they want to hold on to that second place spot. This win is huge for both teams. Let's see who can take it. It's time to get in the game. Seeing that intro, Faker is basically telling us that death is as light as a feather, but duty is as heavy as a fully fed Shogun. <laughs> That's pretty heavy. Yep, very heavy. Well, welcome once or again. Or as to heavy as riff. your solo queue teammates. That's true. <laughs> They're weighing everything down. True words have never been spoken. Well, SK Telecom versus CJ. We'll see if this series ends in a 2 0 after the first game. You got to really wonder about. CJ's mindset, because they just kind of stood there and took it last game. It was not a pretty sight. And CJ is running effectively the same composition. They are. They've got a very skill shot, poke oriented AD carry. Janna, Kassadin, and Hecarim. The only difference is Lee Sin for Rengar, which I do think is superior in this composition. So Yeah, I do I do agree that I think Ambition's gonna be able to get a little bit more done with this Lee Sin. That Rengar just really fell flat in game number one. And I think a lot of questions, too, about Wolf's Annie play. And will he be able to be as successful with this Annie as he was with the Thresh last game? I mean, keep in mind, SK Telecom did ban that Thresh. They were worried about CJ picking it in the first rotation, and now Wolf's going to try to have to make the plays with uh, Annie. Yep, and looks like we will see a little bit of a leash here on the bottom side. Yep. And what is CJ going to be doing? Looks like they're going to take the little golem right there and try and get an XP advantage. So typically we see them take one of these and then head into lane so they have a minion advantage in terms of getting level two. So that's a cute little trick that you can do. Yeah, about a third or so of the XP bar going to space. Mad life out of range, so he didn't pick up any XP from that, but yeah, that's, right. that's the idea. You don't even take any damage with the Janna shield either. So it's, yep. it's nice, nice subtle advantage for you to get early in this lane phase and see if it actually matters right there. Yeah, Bang and Wolf pushing aggressively. They want that level two as well. And Annie certainly does present a lot of early poking potential with that extremely long auto attack range. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a harassment. It does help protect Corky's more vulnerable early game as well. Oh, definitely. I mean, and when you have that stun loaded up too, you can kind of prevent anyone from coming in and it makes Ezreal just a little bit less safe. You know, I mean, if you can get him right before he arcane shifts, you can load on a decent trade. So here we go. Ambition will be taking the Raptors for blue, so just clearing out one side of the jungle. Yeah, he's got an 80% win rate on that 
least in overall this season, it looks like. And it has been a, a successful champion okay, for him. Okay, Ambition needs to be really careful yeah, right here. I think he's going to find him. Is he going to try to go for this? No, he wanted... I don't think so. He'd have to flash, and it's not really worth it early on. You want to see what he could do in the river right there. Maybe yeah. get the Scuttle Crab, but that's going to be going over to Benki instead. He does have to recall. And Coco eating a lot of harass, but otherwise this should be an easier lane than against that Cassiopeia, especially now that he has that flash up. Yeah. Very true. And Easy Hoon getting a little bit more CS early on, but it's easy to harass with that Lulu. It's also very fun to harass with Lulu. Is that your main criteria right there, though? Oh, yeah. Well, at the end of the day, Lulu is definitely my most played champion in League. And it's pretty fun. Probably goes Lulu, Annie, Nami, I'm guessing, for me. Bad life coming in, and they do get the knockup on Bang, but Space not opting to throw an auto in there. Well, yeah, not too much action happening. Not too surprising, but SK Telecom looks like they're not going to be able to get the same kind of early advantages unless something disastrous occurs for CJ. Yeah. And CJ happy to take this one nice and slowly, and who can blame them? They've got a lot going for them in the late game. Bengi, ooh. Wow, shy. Playing That'd aggressively be... right there, too. Look at all the pink wards, and so Marin absolutely free to be more of the bully in lane. And this is how Marin loves to play. And I think that uh, this is something that SKT has really nurtured ever since the rosters combined because Marin used to just die when he played that way up in the top side. He would find himself ganked, himself ganked. But look at Bengi. Look at all the pink, like the pink ward he's put up there, the pressure he's putting onto the lanes right now. Yeah. And just giving the information necessary in order for Marin to play up like that and keep Shy down. Yeah, Marin's really been much, much more comfortable overall on this new SK Tur Telecom roster than he ever was on SKTS, I think. He really looks like a different player in a, in a good way. Yeah, I think the real issue with Marin was the, that Easy Hoon's passive play, he just made him such a target in the laning phase, and Horo really wasn't doing enough yeah. in order to protect him up on that side. But Bengi's resurgence in terms of Ward's first play over the last couple of weeks has made it so players like Faker and Marin, who do like to be aggressive in lane, can have a little bit more leeway in order to harass their opponents. And uh, Shy, not too much going on though, does make it back to lane. As the, he will be going for the Merc treads first and no big surprise there. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more speed, a little bit more magic resist, and MR is going to be kind of the name of the game for CJ. Everybody on SKT, well, except for Jarvan, I suppose, adding in quite a bit of magic damage. Yeah, and getting the level two boots is just such a great thing to do with Hecarim in general because he does, his damage does scale off of his movement speed, right. so uh, it's you get the resist you need, either it's armor or MR, early on in the game, and you double up with a little bit of extra damage as well, so certainly a very solid item build path onto Hecarim, and he's a bit unique in that way. Yeah, it's very cool. We need more champions that get buffed off of movement speed. I don't know what the other ones would be, though. Because anything I think of sounds like some, you know, yet another animal-human hybrid thing, and I'm tired of those, you know? <laughs> we need something new. I like Bard, because he's kind of like out there, right? It's kind of like he this just looks like a thing. Studio Ghibli character. It's cool though. Wolf getting a bit caught here. He's gonna have to burn that flash. Now Bang taking some damage. I like the look. I think the look is fine. I just don't think it's particularly original. That's all. Well, derivative is kind of the name of the game, but <laughs> that's definitely true for aesthetic choices in League of Legends. Derivative is the name of the game. They look good though. They do, but. I'm waiting for some crazy Guilty Gear style, like, I'm waiting champion. Oh, yeah, dude, that would be sick. <laughs> I'm waiting for Cassidy to go up to Ezreal and be like, Ezreal, I am your father. Yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my big question. <laughs> Shy comes in behind Marin, so that happens. It's not really too exciting. I mean, top laners hitting each other. So, you know, again, I like to equate the top lane with that 
fish slapping dance sketch from Monty Python, <laughs> where they just kind of take turns skipping up to each other and hitting each other <laughs> in the face with a small fish. <laughs> yep. Minor damage, mostly annoyance. That's right. Mostly comedic. Now, Martin is falling behind Shy, however. Yeah. In spite of that early harassment. He's starting like to, yeah. Early on, he, he did trade some of his CS for more aggressive harassment. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, well, easy even to pick up this blue buff. Again, you know, just like not a lot of uh, aggression going on across the board. Nobody trying to contest any buffs. Nobody really trying to gank too much, except for that one bot lane gank by CJ. This is such a different game compared to how SKT played against GE Tigers, uh, which was incredibly dynamic. Yeah. And I'm a bit surprised that SKT isn't... Well, I'm not. They're just waiting for a mid-game power spike, really. That's, yeah. there's, mean, not, there's not really anything they can do early on. Uh, they, the one opportunity they have to gank is Hecarim if he's pushed far forward like this with his lack of movement summoners. But you can see Ambition playing on the top side as well just in case somebody comes up there. Lots of wards up into the top lane. So otherwise, it will be very difficult for Bengi to make plays. Too much movement and disengage out of mid. Yep. And oh, there we go. A okay. big attempt onto space. He uses that summoner heal and the flash to just barely survive through the ignite from Wolf. Man, that was a close call. But now Bengi's making the move right yep. onto the blue buff here. That's right, Mad Life trying to come down with ambition to stop this one, but Tibbers still up. There's a Whirlwind. And where is Bang? He's coming up now. They could use him. If they can get this one, Bengi does manage to smite away that blue buff. Now Cataclysm comes in, ambition in trouble. Another kill comes in for Wolf. That's gonna be first blood for him. And Coco getting low, and it looks like he'll barely survive. Shy manages to pick up the kill though on Bengi, return for CJ, and there's another one for CJ as well now. Bang manages to equalize it, it's gonna be two for two. And SK Telecom not quite with the opportunity to take the dragon just yet. But yes. That's the biggest, one of the biggest fights over blue buff I think I've ever seen. <laughs> but with the dust settles, Easy Hoon's the one with double buffs in this yep. situation, and that's going to make it very difficult for this caster who's already falling behind. Let's take a look at what happened right here. So Benki is going to be the recipient of this blue buff thanks to the smite at the end. Now, Shai has TP advantage right now. Maokai about halfway through the TP cooldown. So Benki's going to go in. There's the wild growth. Does get a little bit of the knockup. Benki flashing out. Looks like a bit of a miscommunication. Benki could have stayed in there longer and made yeah. more of the wild growth. Shai with a good ult over the wall gets the fear down and then starts windmilling onto Wolf. Mad Life gets the killing blow with the Zephyr. But Shy is cleaned up afterwards. So, like you said, two for two, just about even, except that double buff going on to an already winning lane with Easy Hoon. Yeah, and a kill on each support, which is how things should be. Omar in 2v2, trying to get back to his turret. Will he be able to? He still has flash, so he'll probably be okay. There we go, yeah, yep. He's going to be fine, not to mention Shy uh -oh, doesn't uh -oh. have ultimate, but oh here we boy. go, Coco with the roam. This yeah, old. bad life there as well. You're not making it out of that one. Sorry, Marin. That's a, that's a 1v4. This will free up the dragon, though, for SK Telecom. So was it worth it? I'm not so sure. Well, once you four-man the top lane like that, <laughs> makes it pretty obvious what they're going to do. Space trying to get out of this one, but oh, he's nice going tibbers. to get hit by the Tibbers and cleaned up by the Phosphorus Bomb. Good yeah. use of that early scrying orb. And look at that. They're going to get a tower for it, two, maybe two towers. Yep. SK Telecom really pushing this adv advantage for all it's worth. Lots of deep wards going in at the same time. Well, that was just yet more great teamwork between Bang and Wolf. Bang using that scrying orb, Wolf being able to land the Tibbers because of it. These two have really been great as a duo today. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, is that Space didn't, wasn't playing far enough back. I mean, well, Wolf yeah. didn't even have to flash in order to get that Tibbers off. So it's the best that's. Kind. <laughs> It's a pretty big positional error right there from Space. If on Ezreal with an Arcane Shift, he can't get away from a Flashless Annie, that is not a good sign. Space really hasn't been on his game tonight overall. Yep. Coco trying his best to farm and stay relevant, but that Athene's done now for Easy Hoon. Starting to do a decent amount of damage. Man, yeah, the mid and the AD carry pretty far ahead CS wise for SK Telecom right now. Looks like CJ will be able to take the Rift Sculler, but it doesn't really matter right now. Dragon's already down and will be down. 
still by the time that Rift Scuttler goes away and comes back. Yeah, CJ really not making the best objective trade so far in this series. Yep. And that's that kind of been the, the story so far. Is CJ just hasn't been able to really control those objectives very well at all. Game one, not at all. Yeah, they have to be worried because right now SKT is ramping up into the point of the game where they're probably going to be the strongest right here. Yep. And we just don't see really any MR yet coming out of CJ. They are going to have a very difficult time dealing with this composition in the mid game. Do you think Shy maybe should have gone for a defensive MR item first rather than Trinity Force this game? No, you have to have the Trinity Force because otherwise you need that damage to actually blow up the back lines on Hecarim. He'll book, he'll go into one after he completes the Trinity Force, but you need it for the lane pl presence and uh, the tower damage. And the no idea, huh? the, well, the idea with Hecarim is that you're going to be split pushing until you can get tanky enough anyway. And so you really want to have the pressure in terms of the split. So that, and he will have that with Trinity Force. Hecarim is an outstanding split pusher, because, partially because he's so hard to, to gank. Uh, he moves so quickly with his E and can get over walls with his ultimate that you he's a good way to draw the game out into the late game where this Cassidy will really pick up steam. And Ezreal's late game damage over a whole team with True Shot Barrage is pretty significant, especially onto a squishy back line like Corky and Annie. True. Yeah, Marin will have to be pretty careful to get in front of that. Reduce the damage a bit. And SKT, oh, they're waiting in the blue buff pit for CJ. Good wards by SK Telecom. Uh, ah, scrying The jig wet. is up. Yep, that's right. But will they be able to still take this blue buff? We'll see. I don't think so. Not with... Now there are four people right around there. Oh, nice timbers are going to go in onto Abyssin, and they caught him. Yep, another non-flash timbers, but they're going to turn this one around. Shy comes in with the ultimate. He's going to try to catch Bang. Bang, oh, might be able to get away. He's waiting. He doesn't have his flash. He will get taken down by Coco. Bengi, though, gets wild growth. Will he survive? Shy getting a bit low himself. Still no defenses, and Bengi with that wild growth. It's still alive. Coco flashes to try to get the kill, and he gets it. Not bad. Coco's still a bit low, though, and SK Telecom going to be able to answer yet again these fights coming out even in terms of kills, but I just feel like SKT is able to get more afterwards, because look at this, now they get the blue buff, they can push the mid lane up. Well, so they also killed Ambition first, so it, yeah. was, it was a two oh, for three right. there. Oh, you're right, two for three there, yeah. Uh, in favor True. of SKT. Ambition coming back around now, though, so it looks like they aren't going to be able to get this blue buff, but still a win for SK Telecom. Uh, Shy and Marin both using their teleports over the course of that fight, but Coco just, you know, at, right after buying that Rod of Ages, certainly not in much of a power spike. And I feel that blowing the Tibbers onto Ambition wasn't that good considering how SKT played out the rest of that fight. Space in trouble again. Oh yeah, Bang trying to come up as well. Mad Life there to save him, but he took a lot of damage. You know, it, with that pick onto Ambition too, it wasn't it wasn't just that. It was that then they used the Cataclysm, so. I feel like overall, yeah, a lot used. Right, and you can poke that. after that. Of course, you have the Lulu too, and you're trying to deny a Cassidy who is relatively short range. So yeah. I think they could have played it out a lot smoother in terms of controlling that objective. Instead, Shy got a flank as SKT overcommitted a little bit into the blue buff. Yep. And when Bang is at one third health, no summoners trapped in the dragon pit with a Hecarim. That's a scary place to be if you're an AD carry. <laughs> like, oh no. Yeah. Although I will say that Wolf did get another nice stun off to keep space alive, or keep yeah. Bang alive, rather. Yeah, for a little bit. For a lot longer than I thought he was going to. So Wolf still lurking in the brush right here. Will be found out by a ward from Mad Life. Coco backs off. A lot of pink wards around this dragon pit for SKT. As we see it about to spawn. Old pink wards in the inventory of CJ, though, so we'll see if they can actually make something of this ambition. Sees a ward with his raptor buff, and that'll be eliminated, but two more. It's like a, a ward hydra. You cut off one head, and two more take its place. That's right, man. Sometimes you just need to drop the double ward. <laughs> the double deuce, as Strong Bad would say. <laughs> which, is, which means that's how we should all refer to it, in my opinion. All right, well... Pressure control, pretty easy here from SKT. They still have their mid lane tower up. I don't think CJ's really going to be able to do anything about this dragon. 
And with no tower to push in the top side either, they may not be able to trade anything at all for it. Uh, Three. Dragon. This would be SK Telecom's seventh dragon in a row this series. And it will be. I don't know what's gotten into CJ. They just, they're picking compositions where they can't do anything. And that's part of the problem. You may look at it and say, well, why aren't they doing anything? Well, they, they can't. They can't it's, really. It's the dragon fear, man. I read about this in Dragonlance. It's when a dragon is near, they produce sort of like a magical aura of fear <laughs> that uh, can really cause problems for anyone near, you know, any adventurers nearby. So why does SKT, uh, how come they don't have the dragon fear? They can resist it. I see. The, uh, you know, whether this is through class or race skills, perhaps some magic items that they <laughs> discovered, it's hard, to, it's hard to say. Maybe so, they just got a better roll on the old D20. That's true, some feats help. They uh, roll the save against the dragon fear, not bad. <laughs> it's hard to do. Natural 20s. It's also the Dragon Slayer Jarvan skin. Do you think that's it? Uh, that's true. He is kind of, <laughs> the, CJ's kind of obligated to let him kill the dragon aren't they, at that point. Like, well, he's got the skin. It's like if you pick Olaf, you're automatically allowed to take every dragon because you are the Dovahkiin. <laughs> Dragonborn. Well, SKT is kind of walking all over CJ at this point. I mean, CJ picked this composition that was going to scale. Yeah, it it again, I don't. Yeah. I don't really get what they're trying to do in this series. Uh, yep. There's, uh, there is a certain amount of synergy within their comp, but they really have to wait for a long, long time on this Cassid. And Easy Hoon has picked early game lane bullies in both occasions, and as convincingly one lane by 50 or more CS. Well, if you add the uh, two CS leads between the mid and the AD carry right now, they're about 100 CS up total on Coco and Space. All right, it's where a lot of this gold lead is actually coming from right now. Yeah. And Wolf and Bang is going to try and use that Trinity Force to take down the last remaining Tier 1 turret. Can't quite get it yet. Shy is a, a bit of a threat. Wow, Shy is going for now. Randuin's next. I do not agree with that. Against this team? Yeah. I don't I don't what? I don't see it. Alright. Maokai, Lulu, Corky to a certain extent, Annie. These are all champions that do a fair amount of magic damage, which Randuin does not really help you against. Aside from that, yeah, you have more health, so you can survive more hits, but it doesn't reduce the hits you're taking. I mean, the fact, too, even if he wanted to have Randuin's, the fact that he has built Warden's Mail first instead oh, yeah. of Giant's Belt is just another giant question mark in his itemization. Very puzzling. Huh. Yeah, I really don't know. I have, <laughs> I have no explanation for why Chai would be wanting to go for this. Instead, because the damage from Bang is is not enough that you need that armor right now. It's certainly not enough from Jarvan. No, and no Corky, definitely not. Yeah, Corky does a good amount of magic damage as well. You know, he'd be fine with just the HP. So, well, okay, well, it's going to be a long time before he actually has any MR in order to deal with what SKT is throwing at him. Well, when SK Telecom sees this build, too, that's just going to let them push all the faster. Coco comes down, Wild Growth onto Easy Hoon. Ambition takes some damage as Bengi comes in with the Cataclysm, flashes back into his own one. Crazy play there, Shy coming in with the home guards. Chibbers drops down, Bengi in trouble, gets picked off by Spaces, True Shot Barrage. Wolf manages to flash the ult from Shy. So a kill for CJ, a bit of an awkward position there for SK Telecom to be in. Coco and Ambition getting very low, but no kills there. Well, they punished the overextension there from SKT, but yeah. they had to use the teleport to do it. They got one kill, and it doesn't look like they're actually going to be able to take an objective. So that was actually a lot invested for not a lot of return, especially since it pulled Shy out of the top lane, and SKT can continue putting damage down onto this Tier 1. So if they can get a tower for this, this is going to be a... Big misplay and they from will. CJ. And they One kill, uh, definitely not worth it. Yeah, really nice play, though, by uh, Easy Hoon and Bengi to make that only one kill. Could have been more. They're going to try to respond with a mid lane turret here, but it doesn't look like SKT is going to allow it. Dragon up in a minute 30 now. Uh, wave clear too good. So CJ, they found a really awkward timing window in order to use that TP because now the TP is not going to be up for the dragon. Yeah. 
talisman finished by Wolf now too, so he's gonna have those extra scary talisman tibbers and gauges, and it's just gonna help Bengi get forward, Bang get back if he needs to. What is Shy building? He's got Warden's Mail and now more armor. This is really, he's not the team to prioritize armor against. He's building Frozen Heart. I, I have no explanation for this. I really don't think this is a good idea. Yeah, the autos from Lulu don't do enough that that would be a big problem, I would think. Huh. In the meantime, Bang will just be happy to poke him all day. You know, when it comes to, when we see th pro gamers do strange things like this, you always have to assume that they have a, a reason for doing this, a legitimate reason too, but this is one of those ones where it's pretty puzzling any way you look at it. Okay, Shy coming, coming in, in again. Yeah, that's right. They're going to go in on the Bengi, though. SKD lurking in the river. Wild Growth keeps Bengi alive. Does Annie have a stun loaded up? Not quite yet. Ult as Shy tries to escape here, and Rocket's coming in. Pushes all of CJ back. This is going to cost them a mid lane turret and possibly a dragon as well. SK Telecom getting poked a little bit, but still in decent shape as they turn around for this dragon. They have the vision. CJ with a lot of wards near dragon as well, but with everyone damaged, can they contest this? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nope. In fact, Shy just going to run back up to the top side. He doesn't have TP available. Nope. Baron was He's coming down there to TP right on over, and another dragon lost by CJ Entis. That is eight dragons in a row now on the day for SK Telecom. You're keeping score at home. <laughs> and zero for CJ. Yeah. This is going to uh, really skew the averages for both teams, isn't it? <laughs> Well, SKT's Dragon Denied stat will be going up. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> and Dragons per game. Yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. Well, CJ trying to mount some sort of siege on the mid lane right now, but there's so much wave clear there, though, that nothing really is too much is going to happen. Yep, that is He's nice. checking that brush right there. We'll find several members of CJ lurking in the top side of the river. Yeah, SKT's got a lot of wave clear. have any trouble at all with this. Well, in spite of in spite of their overwhelming amount of magic damage, the itemization from CJ means that this really isn't going to be a problem, actually, for SKT. Yeah, uh, Frozen Heart finished now for Shy. And he's going to slow down the auto attacks, sure, but yip de doo I'm actually not sure Frozen Heart is a, be is a good item for Mar in there, either. Space is mostly going to be relying on spell casting. And uh, that's a good point, too. I think that having a Randuin's Omen so he can get some slows down on the engage might be a little bit better. Uh, Shy will be auto-attacking some. It's okay. It's 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 better. It's much better. Yeah. I mean, because it is a legitimate concern if Marin has to turn around and go back into the SKT lines to deal with Shy. You know, there the Frozen Heart will be beneficial. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they can just poke it out right now anyway. Yep. And... More than likely uh, take this one home. Coco just hasn't been able to do that much. CJ's going to have to have a hell of an engage here in order to make something work out. But SKT has a lot of tools in order to counter against that. They've got shields. They've got the Maokai ultimate to reduce a lot of the damage coming in. And an immense amount of hard CC. Yep. Easy in. Coco. One. The eyes of methodical, cold-hearted killer. The other, the eyes of someone who is enjoying some of his last games on Cassidy. <laughs> well, he did do well uh, as Cassidy in their last set, but I like the Cassidy and Rumble combo a lot better because it doesn't require both champions going in, just one of them, and you can maintain a front line with Rumble. Mm -hmm. While with Hecarim, you, you do have to all in and have that presence on the back line if you want to do any damage at all. But with the Rumble bans this game, and they have been banned by CJ here, have to wonder, and there's Easy Hoon weaving in and out of the minion wave. He has plenty of backup. Yeah. And look at the warding difference now. I mean, CJ just doesn't have any wards anymore. Uh, yeah, you're right. They literally have one ward on the map right now. And they have two sight stones, so that's a bit questionable. Hmm. Trying to get some more up, but SK Telecom just tightening their grip right now over CJ's jungle. After this, all the CJ fans will be like, I knew it. 
<laughs> Sorry. The moment this of glory is. is over. The dream is dead. Nah, it's one series, but yeah. they definitely have had an off night, and the only thing they, they've really brought in that's surprising and is the Hecarim. That's the only new thing that CJ's really added to their team compositions. And it's just not enough right here. And it's just not even as good as some of the comps they've run in the oh, past. Oh, there we go. Uh, Shy coming down, but a lot of people dodging that ultimate. Two shot barrage did a bit of damage, but it's not going to do enough. Push back SK Telecom. Yeah, SKT was so ready for that Hecarim ultimate. Yeah, well, I, they have so many ways to disengage from it that, yeah. and control Hecarim once he goes in that it, there's really not a lot they can do. There's not any critical cooldown that Shy can wait out in order to get a clean engage. He's going to be CC'd pretty much every single time. Yeah. So another tower. No SKT. They continue to build that lead. And Easy Hoon is here getting that wave clear. He's a full core item up on Coco right now. Yeah. Still defending those minion waves very easily, too. That's one thing Lulu is very good at. She's got great wave clear, and really everybody on SKT has good wave clear, as we'll see right here. Goodbye. Yep. Bye, wave. wave. Oh, Shy has a cowl now. All right. Where's and Lulu Ambition ammo? has Looks like a null magic mantle. If they can drag this game out for another 20 minutes, maybe they can win, but I doubt that's going to happen. Yeah, Dragon number four coming up in under a minute now for SK Telecom. Looks like Shy is going for that Banshee's Veil. Doesn't want to get knocked up by anything, I suppose, or stunned by a Tibbers. Uh, no, he's, he may be going for the Spirit Vistage, too. Just didn't have enough money for the Kindle Gem. We'll oh, see. Oh, yeah, could be, too. We'll see what he's, what he's right. actually focusing on. And... The cowl now done for Ambition. We won't be seeing an Aegis or a Locket anytime soon, which is an item that they desperately need. Shy yeah. roaring right. into the bottom lane, trying to put down some pressure. This is what Hecarim's good for. But Corky will just walk right back down there and try and clear this one out. But drag it up in seven seconds, and for the first time, SKT a bit slow to the objective, but Easy Hoon is moving over there trying to get the Scuttle Crab in time to yeah. push them out. And everybody from CJ's on the top side of the map. Yeah, SK Telecom could just walk in and start the I think they try and trade this for a Baron, but there are too many wards there. I think SKT might be okay with that, actually. They've got so much wave clear. How much is CJ going to be able to get out of this, even if they do take the Baron? There's so many wards. Yeah. CJ wants to make this trade. Now they have no vision over the Dragon. They have no idea whether it's going down or not right now. Uh, now they know. Shy with teleport. Well, they, Corky still could theoretically, now they see Corky, but Corky could have been theoretically soloing it right there. In fact, oh. I would have tried to hide Bang right there and seen if they would have taken the bait. Shy trying to push up mid, Easy Hoon doing the same. This is a dance around the Baron right now. Nobody wanting to commit to this dragon. Yep. It's a bit dangerous for each team. Neither one really wants to engage right now. Shy could come in from behind, though. SKT pushed back in the mid. Shy's right there. Marin may be a little bit late to this party. Ah, but Easy Hoon, a bit too scary. They scare Shy back. It's a dangerous moment there. Oh, people going in now. Mad Life taking a lot of damage. Nearly going down. True Shot Barrage comes back in. Bang has to be careful. Gets out just in time. There's Tibbers. There's a nice combo from Jarvan coming in as well. And Coco into the red buff pit, but killed by Marin anyway. And Mad Life escaping with that whirlwind. And I think SKT's just going to go right for this Baron now. Nothing really stopping them. Ambition could still theoretically try to steal, but with all those wards, with Wolf in the back line, running interference, I really doubt that Ambition's even gonna try it. Nope, he's already on the way out. Uh, CJ got really split up right there, but they were never able to fully clear the wards that SKT had, so as soon as they split, they knew it was perfectly safe. In order to go in on that, Shy is furiously pushing a minion wave just to buy himself more time, and his team so that they can, it'll take them a little bit longer to push up the wave. Gonna go do the same thing in the bottom side right now. It's a good reaction, but SKT piling into the Dragon Pit for number four here. I mean, uh, CJ just has not put up a fight at all today. Yeah. Shy looking for an opportunity to maybe come into this Dragon Pit. Dragon getting a bit low. SKT, they need Easy Hoon back, and he's getting there now. 
Oh, Marin just zoning out everybody in back lines. And there's Dragon number four, easily taken by SK Telecom. Marin hardly takes any damage at all, and SKT just waltzes away with a Baron. There's nothing like CJ can dragon. do. Righteous glory done now for Marin. Yep. Combined with the Talisman of Ascension and the just enormous amount of engage on SKT, nobody's going to be getting away. Even Coco in space will be hunted down mercilessly. Looks like Wolf's going for a Righteous Glory as well, too. So they might oh, be yeah. able to get the double going now. It's always fun to see that. Oh, yeah. Talisman Righteous Glory Annie has been the popular way to build that champion. Gives you that a little bit of extra tankiness that can serve you quite well. It's pretty fun to build on Leona, too. <laughs> That's true. I've been doing it a lot lately. Shy, in the meantime, is building more armor. Oh, Banky just taking a big chunk out of Mad Life, and Mad Life pushes him away. It's almost like he exploded and pushes put people back. <laughs> well, CJ, better hope they can get their stuff together before IEM, otherwise it's yeah. going to be a pretty dismal showing by them. You know, maybe they're just uh, hiding their true power, you know? They really want to take GE Tigers by surprise, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'm just, I'm disappointed in CJ. They Me just, too. they just haven't shown anything new, and SK Telecom has just dispatched them with ease. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of a team fight going on, but not much resistance from CJ again. SK Telecom just kind of blowing people up. Space destroyed there by Easy and the rest of SKT. Shy so low, he has to go back, and there goes the inhibitor. Baron and four dragons, and SK Telecom is ready to kind of end this whenever they want to. Yeah, I was expecting this to be a much closer series. With the way CJ had been playing up to now. The fact that the meta seemed to be moving into their favor yeah, and too. that they had a long break to work on some of these champion pool issues, but Ambition yeah. has been a total non-factor in the games tonight. Yeah. Uh, compared to Bengi, he just hasn't done anywhere near as much work in terms of ganks, vision control, nothing. He's been utterly out jungled. I think it's another, and I think this is yet another instance of players that I talked to before the games just end up being terrible. <laughs> I did it to Tucson once, now I did it to Shy today. I'm sorry, I'm just not gonna talk to players before the matches anymore. That's right, you distract them, duh. I guess. They're like, oh man, Shy just like, you know, he just felt like uh, he, w he could never measure up to a support player at that point. <laughs> He's like, wow. Well, he spent his whole his whole career with Mad Life. Well, that, so. is, that is true. That is true. <laughs> anyway, yep. I, I really don't understand what's going on with Coco's champion pool these days. It seems like if you ban LeBlanc and then he doesn't play Ezreal or Jace. Maybe. I, and Ezreal Jace wouldn't have done well here. Yeah. You know, maybe. In the end, because there's too much mobility. They would have just been taken down. Double AD comp would have been very vulnerable against what SKT is running. Oh, easy Hoon, only 5,000 gold ahead of Coco right now. Only 5,000. And Marin picks up that Abyssal Scepter after the Spirit Visage, because why not? You know, maybe Shy, you know, wasn't planning on playing Hecarim, but then I was like, you gonna play Hecarim? And he's like, yeah, in, in, that, <laughs> in that, yeah, Doa, that's a great idea. I hadn't thought of that. I am gonna play Hecarim both games. Sorry, Shy. Meanwhile, here comes the Rando and Zoman from Shy. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. At least he built the giant spell first. <laughs> I'm really baffled by this, this well, Hecarim build against this team. Yeah. I mean, Frozen Art, then the Spirit Visage. It kind of should have gone the other way, I feel. But. Agreed. I don't even really understand. The, uh, the Frozen Art, I know oh, here we go. for CDR, but... He's going to be fast, but too late. Mad Life already dead. A big knockup in the Cataclysm. Coco trying to get to the back lines. Ambition will go down. And can Shy make anything happen? There's the Whimsy. Hecarim suddenly tiny. He does manage to pick up Bang, but meanwhile, a double kill happens for Marin in the other side of the fight. Wolf over the wall with the flash to help Easy and pick up the double. And that is an ace, only losing Bang, and that will be the end of the game. SK Telecom taking a resounding 2 0 victory over CJ Antis. They really needed it, not only in the standings, not only for the grudge that they held, but also for that individual game score total, huge, huge win and big playoff implications for SK Telecom as the Nexus goes down and that is going to be it. Easy and trying to get yet another kill in the fountain here. Can't quite do it. GG, that's a 2-0 for SK Telecom. Yeah, very clean win and SKT, I mean, Najin gave them a lot more trouble earlier on in this week. They didn't yeah. really even have to adapt champion picks or much at all between the games. Uh, it's just total just... domination it, and to a certain degree. Uh, SKT could have been pretty ru running pretty much any team composition they wanted to because CJ just didn't seem to have any level of control 
at all. Uh, a lot of that was coming from Ambition just having a very off night. There was more domination in that series than the entire like 50 Shades series combined, <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh boy. Well, CJ is going to have to try and bounce back after that one. That is a very rough loss for them. It's, it's frankly pretty shocking. I was not expecting them to just kind of roll over like that. Oh, well, Coma. I mean, yeah, for well, SKT, got to be happy with a 2-0 like that. And CJ, too, in their last two series against tougher opponents, in this case, SKT and Jyn they used, they got 2 0 both times, and they used the same strategy in the 2 0s both times. It's like they don't, they just, they come in with one plan, and if that fails, there's nothing.